Math 3 Lesson Summary Video More Segment Lengths and Circles This lesson is a develop understanding task, which is meant to introduce you to a concept, but not necessarily finalize rules or strategies. The purpose of this lesson is to make observations about the relationships between radii and points of tangency, two tangents from the same point, and a chord in a perpendicular radius. In the figure at the right, CD is tangent to circle A at the point D. Use a ruler, protractor, and the figures, or use GeoGebra, to measure sides and angles and look for a relationship between the tangent CD and the radius AD. By looking on GeoGebra, I will be able to measure and change this circle so I can see if it works for lots of cases. Now that I have a tangent, to the circle at the point D, and I have the segment CA and the segment AD, I do know AD is the radius of the circle. And it is going to the point of tangency, which by definition the point of tangency is the point on the circle where the tangent line intersects it. And now I want to look for anything special that may pop up. I don't know about the segment lengths, but just by looking at the picture, it really reminds me of a right triangle. I don't know for a fact that it is, and I can't assume anything, but I do want to try and measure it. So I think I'm going to try and measure angle A, D, C. And what I notice is that GeoGebra even acknowledges that it is a 90 degree angle by putting in the little square box and not just the round angle measure symbol. So it does turn out to be a 90 degree angle, but maybe that's just in this, this situation. So I wanna try it out for a couple of different sized circles and different arrangements for the points and such. So if I make it a bigger circle, it's still a 90 degree angle. If I make it a smaller circle, it's still a 90 degree angle. If it's the same size circle, but I move point C over here, it's still a 90 degree angle. And if I move point C over here, it's still a 90 degree angle. Now I can make the conjecture that if I have a tangent line to a circle and a radius that goes to the point of tangency, it creates a 90 degree angle. That may not seem like such a big deal, but if you notice, by having a right angle, we do end up with a right triangle. And any time we can have a right triangle, this opens up a whole new area of possibilities because we can always use the Pythagorean theorem anytime we know that we have a right triangle. So this is a very useful rule that pops up from time to time. In each of the circles below, two tangents intersect outside the circle. Use GeoGebra or a ruler in the pictures below to measure the lengths of the segments CE and CD. Look for a pattern and make a conjecture about the relationship between these segments. So the directions told us to investigate the measures of these tangent segments. Remember, we were told that CE is tangent to the circle A and CD is tangent to the circle A. So if I measure the length of CE and the length of CD, the first thing I notice is they're both equal to six. Well, that's interesting, but maybe it's just because that's the way I drew it. We do tend to naturally like things to be symmetrical. So maybe I should try to mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna make the circle a lot bigger and there's still 4.3 and 4.3. I'm gonna try and pull the point over somewhere and I still get 9.1 and 9.1. Pull the point over here somewhere. 7.3 and 7.3 really get a teeny tiny little circle and I've got 8.7 and 8.7. So it looks like pretty obviously um, these two segments turn out to be equal to one another. So I'm going to try and capture our conjecture that if we have two tangents from the same point, the two tangent segments 
are congruent. They are equal to one another. In the situation below, you have a chord, CD, that is perpendicular to a radius, AB. Use a ruler and the figure to look for patterns and make a conjecture about the relationship between the chord and the radius. Well, now we want to investigate and see what's going on between this radius, AB, and this chord, CD. We were told that they are perpendicular, so I want to make sure that that stays the case. So yes, if I change my circle, I've still got the chord perpendicular to B. If I move where my point C is, it's still staying perpendicular to AB. So now I know I can play around with my circle. We wanted to look for some kind of relationship with something. I don't know that the angles are going to be terribly interesting because they're all 90 degrees and they're staying 90 degrees. So I'm going to try measuring some of these segments and see if anything pops up at me. So AE turns out to be 2.7 and EB turns out to be 1. I don't know that I notice anything there. We've got they're not half or anything. Uh, let's try and measure uh, the other segments. If I do C, E, and then if I do D, E, aha, now those two turned out to be the same thing. I wonder if we make the circle bigger, if that's true. Oh, 5.4, 5.4, make it smaller. 1.1 and 1.1. Uh, what if we move where the line is? 4.2 and 4.2. Oh, 2.1 and 2.1. That seems to be fairly consistent. And it looks like it's always the case. 4.4. I can't seem to move it anywhere where they don't end up being the same value. So now we want to claim that if we have a radius that is perpendicular to a chord, that's going to automatically make it bisect that chord. So a radius perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Now it's also important to note that many of our theorems work in both directions. So the converse of this is also true. If we know we have a radius and we know that the chord is cut in half, then that also means that this must be perpendicular. So it can go in both directions. It's very important to remember our rules in both directions sometimes because that's how we use them a lot. 